in this segment we will discuss uh, another important uh, element of master production scheduling that is available to promise available to promise is that portion of firms inventory and planned production that is not already committed and is available to the customer atp could be discrete or cumulative it has two types discrete atp or cumulative atp so atp for period 1 is inventory from the previous period plus mps minus customer orders due before next mps and atp for other periods that it, that is period 2 uh, 3 and so on is mps for that period minus customer orders due before next mps so actually this part is this form so we we don't consider inventory from previous period to calculate atp for periods other than period 1 so you simply need to calculate mps using the logic that we discussed and subtract customer orders that are due before next mps so we are talking about customer orders so we are not having forecast values to calculate atp we have to consider confirm customer orders so i have these uh, formulas with you in fact this is the actual formula just remember that for period 1 you have to add inventory from previous period as well so atp is mps for that period minus customer orders due before next mps uh, so this is the formula for discrete atp and we will see that uh, cumulative atp is just the sum of discrete atps so atp ignores the forecast and focuses on the customer orders only it is calculated for the first period on the master production schedule grid and is then calculated only for each period in which there is an mps receipt so as i mentioned in the previous slide that for the first period the formula is slightly different and for the rest of the periods we have to calculate or uh, we can calculate mps uh, sorry we can calculate atp where there is and mps receipt so now we will actually solve the same mps grid that we saw to explain the logic of mps so so uh, th this is the grid that we have so we have lot size of 50 and safety stock of 0 we had partially solved it but we we'll, we will solve afresh so we have an inventory of 50 items available in period 0 at this point is actually your demand time fence and here is the planning time zone the slushy zone and, and the liquid zone so we have inventory of 50 available so we don't have any mps so 50 plus 0 minus 90 will be 31 31 plus 0 minus 17 so just uh, recall that for pab in the frozen zone we have to consider the customer orders so 31 minus 17 will be 14 
and we have 14 items available the demand is for 15 so we will be out of stock if we don't have mps so we will have an mps of 50 here so 14 plus 50 minus 15 will be 49 so now in the slushy zone and liquid zone we will be considering the greater of forecast and customer orders so we have 49 items available so 49 minus 25 will be 24 so we don't need mps receipt here so we have 24 available and 24 is the greater of these two so as we don't need to have safety stock here so we can fulfill this demand of 24 using this inventory of 24 so we don't need an mps here and the ending inventory will be zero of course we we do need to have an mps here so uh, this uh, uh, zero plus 50 minus greater of these two five and 23 is 23 so we will have 27 available so 27 minus 21 will be six no mps required in period uh, seven as well so we do need an mps in period eight so six plus 50 56 minus 21 is 35 and uh, 35 minus 25 so we will have 10 items available so 10 is less than this 25 we need an mps in period 8 so 10 plus 50 60 minus 25 is 35 so we have made uh, the mps using the same logic in this case the safety stock was zero so whenever pab was less than zero that is a negative value we had mps received in that period now we have to calculate um, the available to promise first we will calculate discrete atp then cumulative atp for the first period this will be equal to previous inventory of 50 plus mps for that period zero uh, minus uh, the customer order still next MPS. so that will be equal to atp for ATP for period one will be equal to previous PAB 50 plus MPS minus customer orders till next MPS. So next MPS is in period three. So customer orders till next MPS are um, nine. We will have an ATP of 14 in period one. So next ATP will be calculated when we have MPS. So for example, for period three, the available to promise will be equal to MPS that is 50 minus customer orders till uh, next mps so we have these orders because next mps is in period six so 50 minus 15 minus 11 minus 9 so that is 50 minus uh, 35 so that is 15. similarly for period six we will have 50 minus customer orders till next MPS. Next MPS is in period 8. So 50 minus 7 will be 43. And then for period 8, that will be 50 minus 1. So that will be 49. So we are not sure about customer orders and MPS after period 10. So we can't make calculations for ATP there. So these are the values for discrete ATP.
So what about cumulative ATP? So for the first period, it will be equal to discrete ATP. For period three, it will be 14 plus 15, so 29. For period six, it will be 29 plus 43, so that will be 72. And then for next period, that is period eight, it will be 72 plus 49, so that will be 121. So what is the difference between these two? So the difference is that in discrete ATP, we are assuming that that quantity will be consumed before next NPS. So in discrete ATP, we are assuming that this 14 will be consumed before period three, or this 15 will be consumed before period six, when there is a new MPS of 15. In cumulative ATP, we are assuming that we can carry on an ATP of previous period uh, throughout the planning horizon, for example. So generally for the products that have small shelf life, then discrete ATP is more logical to be used. And the products that have longer shelf life, then we, we recommend to use cumulative ATP. So this is one point, whether to use discrete or cumulative ATP. The second question is what is the use of calculating ATP? So as I explained previously that we can see how much we can commit to the customer. So for example, if we, if we receive a customer order of say 25 items to be delivered in, in period three, and we are, for example, using cumulative ATPs, so we can commit an order of 25 because we have 29 available. So I, I repeat that we are planning, MPS is about planning. So we are still here, we are still here in, in period zero. So we can look ahead how much extra capacity and inventory is available. So for example, if we receive an order of uh, say 50 items to be delivered in, in period seven. So we have this inventory available this ATP available to, to fulfill that order. So this is what is the benefit of uh, MPS that we discussed that salespeople can make realistic commitments to the customer uh, based on uh, these values of uh, ATP. So for example, the company received an order of 50 to be delivered in period six, can this be committed so yes, again, if we are using cumulative ATP, we can make a commitment of 50 items to be delivered in period six. And of course you can think of some. So that is the basic benefit of using ATP. Uh, we will take a pause and we will solve the same example with uh, some safety stock in the next segment. 